Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a processing sketch and render it to a movie. So this comes up a lot and there's probably a variety of ways that you could do this. So I'm going to show you a particular technique that hopefully will be useful to you. So uh, you know, I picked this arbitrarily. It's one of the examples from my Nature of Code materials. Um, it is a, a simulation called the Game of Life, a cellular automata system, automata. Boy, I'm, I'm never going to get that right ever in my life. Um, and it just, it's a, an, a, an arbitrary animation. But anything, anything at all that you draw to the screen in processing, you can render as a video out of processing. Why would you want to do this? Well, there's a variety of reasons. One is uh, you might want to upload something to Vimeo or YouTube or some other um, <laughs> website to host a video. Uh, you might want to bring this into another project. Maybe you're working on an animation in, in something like After Effects and you want to have some elements that you've programmed in there. I can, Think of some, I'll try to include some examples of people who have done this kind of work in the uh, YouTube description below. So you might want to take what you're doing and incorporate it into another project in video form. Another thing might be actually that you just, the thing that you made is beautiful, but it runs incredibly slow. And you want to, you don't need it to run in real time. So you could render it as a video so that it could run at 30 frames per second and play back as, at a, as an installation or whatever it is you might be doing. So let's look at how you might do that. And there's, there's a, there's a bunch of steps to it, um, um, and I'll try to go through them. <laughs> so the first thing that I will show you, oh, and you know what? This font is remarkably small. So let me just show you in Processing 3, I can go to the Preferences. I'm going to change the Editor font to 36, and I think that's going to be a little bit better. Hopefully you can see that. Um, OK, so what's the first thing that I want to do to this? So what I'm going to do is save, so there's, uh, there, there may be some other uh, processing libraries you can get to render directly to a movie file, but what I'm going to show you how to do, instead of rendering directly to a movie file, you can always just save what's on the screen as an image. So for example, if I put save, um, the function save, and I say um, gol.png, right, I'm just going to put that in draw, and I'm going to run it, See, first of all, I don't know if you can tell if it's running slower or not. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to go to that sketch folder, and you can see right there, there now is a file called gol.png, and you can see it's a snapshot of what was on the screen. Now, I was doing that in draw, so it was doing it over and over and over again, and what we're seeing now is just the last frame that it drew. So the save function is a way, and you might put that in mouse press or attach it, you know, you might at some point just want to use save just to save a snapshot of what's on the screen. But if you use the save frame function, what the save frame function allows you to do is include the pound symbol, the hash symbol, and what it will do now is auto number the files. So every time you call save frame, it's going to save gol underscore one, gol underscore two. So this now, if I'm executing this in draw, every time through draw, I'm going to get a new image file. And I'm going to run this. And I'm going to try not to run for very long. Oops, did I leave it running? Because <laughs> now I'm going to go in and be like, oh my goodness. And you can see there, here it is. I have an image file for every single uh, thing that was saved, uh, every single frame. Now, I don't like this. This is kind of a disaster because I have a zillion files and it's polluting my file system here. So I'm going to delete these and I'm going to show you what I think would be more useful to do. I'm going to make just a directory. I'm going to call it output slash gol pound, 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 pound. And I'm going to run this, and I'm going to let it run. Okay, that was enough time. And uh, now you can see I have this all here, and I can just cycle through it, and you can see there it is, every single frame. And by the way, I'm using the PNG file format, which will save uncompressed. So this way the full quality is there in each and every frame. This way, later on, you could choose to compress it or different codec, whatever you want to do with your video that's a bit outside the scope. So now the question is, what do you do with these files? <laughs> so you could bring them into Final Cut Pro or iMovie or MPEG Studio 15.9ZY Pluto magic thing, rainbow, I don't know, is there a rainbow in there? Whatever it is, you can find your own software. Lots of software can take an image sequence, After Effects will do this for you, and render it to a movie. It so happens that if you want the sort of quick way of doing it, processing up here under the Tools menu, under Tools, there is a Movie Maker tool. So if I go to click here Movie Maker and select it, 
it opens up an interface that says, this tool, and you, I don't know if you can read that, this tool creates a QuickTime movie from a sequence of images. Blah, 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 gives you a bunch of information, all sorts of things you can do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the finder, I'm going to find this output folder, and I'm going to drag this output folder right here. And then I'm going to look here and say like, okay, um, my, uh, it's, it's, it's giving me a default height of 640 by 480, but I want to change that because my processing window itself was 640 by 360. What's the frame rate that I want? Oh, and I guess I could have clicked same size as originals, in which case it would just use the size of the, the file. Um, and then I can pick whether I want to have some sort of compression. I'm going to pick animation, which basically means no compression. So I'm going to get a very big file, but I'll be able to bring it into some other software. Again, if I'm using this in After Effects, it's going to need to be recompressed later, so I don't want to compress multiple times. So I could also bring in a sound file if I wanted to include some sound with it. I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm going to hit uh, Create Movie, and it wants me to save it somewhere. I'm going to uh, put it on the desktop as testmovie.move and hit Save. And <laughs> did that already happen? Did it just like do it so fast? Normally it shows a little progress window, but maybe I just had so little. Uh, testmovie.move. I'm going to open this up. Uh, come on, QuickTime. And yep, oh, so it just happened so fast. You can see it, there it is. So now I have a movie file that I can save. Uh, wow, amazingly, if it was longer, you would have probably seen a little progress bar for it rendering it. And you can see this is just a uh, QuickTime movie that I'm playing. Fantastic. So that's the basic gist of it. Uh, in six minutes, I kind of showed you the main piece. But I think we could do a little bit more here because you might be in a situation where you want to start and stop the rendering to a file. Um, you might want to uh, be able to see some information on the screen, whether it's rendering or not. So I'm just going to add a couple more um, pieces to this program just to make it a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, so, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Boolean variable called recording. And I'm going to assume that we're not recording when the program first starts. So Boolean recording equals false. So, and then I'm going to say if recording, this is where I should save those frames. So the other thing I want to do, by the way, now that I finished and made that movie, maybe you need backups and stuff, but I'm just going to go and delete that folder because I don't want to save the previous, uh, I don't need to save those previous raw files. I have everything that I need right here in QuickTime now. And I will just save that, um, the, the, the movie file again. Um, so now only if, only if, the Boolean variable recording is set to true, will it actually save those frames? That's a useful thing. Now what I'm going to do is say, let's say what I want to do is uh, have a way, okay, so if I say, you know, this isn't that interesting, but let's use key pressed. So uh, if I can say, if key equals R or key equals capital R, recording, equals not recording. So what this is going to do is when, oh, I run, I'm in JavaScript land, I wrote function, void. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to say anytime I press R on the keyboard, it will start recording or stop recording. It's going to toggle the Boolean state of recording. If rec not true is false, not false is true. So recording equals not itself. If it's false, become true. If it's true, become false. So that's going to happen there anytime I toggle it, and you can see, like, if I run this program and I go to the files, we can see that it's not recording. If I hit, if I click in here and I hit R, you can see suddenly new files are appearing. If I hit R again, those new files will have stopped. So simply by adding a quick little something to the program, I can kind of turn on and off the recording. Now also what would be nice here is for me to be able to see some visual indication on the screen as to whether it's recording or not. So what if I just right here, I say, okay, um, fill uh, red, otherwise fill green, and draw a circle. I don't know, at the middle of the screen, towards the bottom, that's like a circle. So if we run this, you can see there's a little green, this is like terrible visual design, but there's a little green circle there when it's not recording, 
And when I hit record, that circle turns red. When I hit record again, that circle turns green. I don't know if those are the right colors, the right visual indicators you want, but you get the idea. I can toggle the color of that circle and know whether I'm recording or not. Very useful. But, but are you thinking in your mind, oh no, there's a big problem. I don't want a big ugly green or red circle in my video. But one thing that's wonderful about the save frame function is it's going to save the current view of the processing window. And guess what? The circle is drawn after I call save frame. So save frame is going to save what's in the window and then draw the circle on top of that. That circle won't get saved to the file. So we should be able to see if I go back to um, here and delete that. I'm going to run this and I want to start recording for a little bit. It's recording, it's recording, it's recording, recording. I want to stop recording and then I'm going to close here. I'm going to go and look. Let's just look at these files. No green or red circle. So we've done it. We're, we're able to add a little visual indicator into our window as to whether it's recording or not. Um, I think that's the gist of it. I've tried, ah, so let's just like show something sort of nice that we can do here, which is that if I were to run this at 1920 by 1080, like super high resolution, um, and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to put print line uh, frame rate in here. So I'm going to run this. You can see that processing is not able to render the game of life. It might be hard for you to see this in this sort of like captured video tutorial, but it's not able to run this super fast at such high resolution. And um, it's actually quite fast. You can see the frame rate is about 14 frames per second, but I want to make this glorious game of life simulation that runs at 30 frames per second. So now if I do this and I hit record, you can see, by the way, it's slowing down also while recording because there is, if there's some energy and computation and time that it takes to render these to a file. If I run this now, run this to, uh, render this to a file, and I stop recording, and I skip out of the program, and I go back to Tools, Movie Maker, and I, uh, uh, whoops, go up here, and I get this output folder and I drag it into here, it's the same folder. Uh, now this needs to be 1920 by 1080. And of course, I could just select the same size as originals, frame rate, create movie, and I want to do test movie 1080 and hit save. And you can see now you're seeing the little progress window, it's just not doing it as fast this time. It's creating the movie. And then uh, it's finished, and I'm going to go to the desktop. Uh, to look at what I've rendered and test movie 1080. I'm going to open this up, <sighs> converting um, so that QuickTime can render it. Come on, QuickTime. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm going to make this full screen. I'm going to play it. You can see I've got my 30 frames per second game of life simulation all programmed in processing. So, oh, I don't know what just happened. Oh, it's, you know what? I left some old files in there. So it like, rendered at the end, that's so it stitched two together. It stitched like the high resolution one with the low resolution one together. That's kind of interesting. So anyway, you can see um, all sorts of possibilities. I hope that this helps you um, with things that you might be making in processing. You can do this with 3D. Uh, you can do this with just about anything. Um, and let me know how it goes for you. Um, so thanks for watching this video and I will be back soon with more videos.